Real Salt Lake have been one of the most entertaining teams of the last couple of years. They entered 2011 looking to get back to the playoffs, back to the MLS Cup Final, which they won in 2009. But Simon, this year was also about something else. It was about the CONCACAF Champions League. Absolutely. After 2010 was validation of their 2009 MLS Cup run, this year was going to take it a step even higher. On an international stage, they wanted to win the CONCACAF Champions League and become that first MLS team to represent the league and the United States in the FIFA Club World Cup. And really the entire league, the whole entire nation actually got behind Salt Lake's uh, run to the final of the CONCACAF Champions League. So there they were, RSL, in a two-game series in the final of the CCL. This was going to be everything for them. They were going to put it all on the line, win it for MLS, if you will, win it for North America, if you will. They went down to Mexico and did okay. A 2-2 tie in Monterey, and it was served up on a platter for them to claim it at home. A 0-0 draw would have been enough, even 1-1. But in the end, Humberto Suazo, El Chupete, he sinks the dagger into the heart of RSL fans with that victory. And not just RSL fans, I think MLS fans all around were a little bit devastated by that. Maybe not as devastated as RSL were a couple of weeks later when their talismanic midfielder and attacker Javier Morales went down with an injury. The Argentine fracturing his ankle on a tackle by fellow compatriot Marcos Mondaini of Chivas USA. After the letdown in the Champions League, this came and Jason Price was wondering what's going to happen next. Well, it was a, a, a long time, I think, until they really found their feet again. Jason Christ had a lot of work to do in 2011. And so after the CCL final loss and the loss of Javier Morales, Real Salt Lake had a lot of work to do. They couldn't seem to find a consistency though, Simon. This was a streaky team all year long. But towards the end of the season, they did rattle off five wins in a row and they came against big opponents in New York, against Philly and against KC. Uh, but then that was followed by four losses in a row and they actually ended the season with a six game winless streak. Well, not in the way you want to be going into the playoffs, but they had they did start to show some depth, and that was, I think, a key thing for them this year. Some young players, Chris Schuler, the big center back, coming in and, and showing some good minutes. Gene Alexander starting to show a little bit, and of course, Luis Gill. Absolutely. Jason Christ says it. They do not go into this postseason with, that, with a single player that hasn't contributed at some point in a significant match. And that's going to be key if there, any more injuries were to come up. Obviously, you know, Saborillo hasn't always stayed healthy. Fabian Espindola has had some injuries. If they were to happen in the playoffs, they have some players. Will it really help them enough to get them to the cup, though? Well, despite those six games without a win to end the season, RSL did get into the playoffs. Simon, this is a team that, because we talked about these streaks, we talked about these runs, they're on the down run, but they could also just turn it around very quickly. And strangely enough, they're happy to be in the Western Conference, in the Western side of the bracket, where they face teams who like to play with the ball on the ground, no slugfests here in the West, and they're going to be underdogs in these matches against the likes of LA and Seattle, and they like that role. And Jason Kreiss in particular, he's a very fiery and emotional coach. He actually admitted that this week in a conference call, and he said, I like that my team takes that from me. And what also gives them the confidence, Greg, is they know they have a full squad here. That same team, that same core that took them to the Champions League final back in April, back together. All the parts. Javier Morales, Kyle Beckerman, everyone's back. And Alvaro Sabario, who was their leading scorer on the season. Are all those parts enough to get them to the cup like they did in 2009? I guess we'll find out.